So why would a seller need or want to do a rent back after the close of escrow? And what should you be aware of if you decide to rent back after the close? Well, today we're covering the reasons for the seller rent back, the six things you need to know when doing a rent back, as well as how a buyer can get their offer accepted when done correctly. I'm Harold Powell, a local real estate agent serving Ventura and the surrounding communities. And if you like my content and want to stay up to date on all things real estate for Ventura, then I suggest hitting the subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of future content. So let's take a look at a few rent back scenarios that may prove useful to a seller. The first is when a seller is buying new construction or even relocating out of the area. With new construction, a builder often wants the buyer to remove the contingencies early on, which means closing ahead of the new build move-in date. So having additional time after closing while waiting for the construction to be completed provides the seller peace of mind knowing that their funds from the sale of their home are available, as well as to avoid any any concern of losing out on the new purchase. Additionally, being able to close, rent back, and then move into new construction avoids having to move twice or having to live out of, out of a hotel. The second situation is a seller relocating out of the area and the seller may want the certainty of property closing ahead of the final move while having additional time to move family to the new location. And the third scenario for using a rent back is when a seller is wanting more time to find a replacement home and or improve their chances of getting their offer accepted when they're competing with a sea of multiple offers that are non-contingent. And in this scenario, the potential rent back period may be longer to give the seller additional time to find and close on the home of choice. The benefit to the buyer is that there is an eventual date that the seller will be out by rather than the contingency of the seller finding a home of choice, which can be challenging in a low inventory market with many non-contingent buyers that are also looking to purchase. Now, there are a couple practical things to be aware of as it pertains to the buyer situation. Now, if the buyer has owner-occupied financing, then they can, in theory, go up to a 60-day rent back without jeopardizing their interest rate as an owner-occupied purchase. Otherwise, they'd have to buy the property as a rental property and pay a higher interest rate and potentially more money down. But if the buyer is a cash or non-owner occupied purchaser, then they can negotiate as long a rent back as needed that is agreeable to the buyer. So let's dive into the six things you need to know about the rent back before you actually do it. Number one is length of time. The length of a rent back is always negotiated between buyer and seller typically at the time of contract. And there are two different rent back forms which depend on the length of time that the rent back is for. If the length of time is less than 30 days, we use the two paid seller remain in possession addendum. If the rent back of 30 days or longer is negotiated, then the eight paid residential lease after sale is used. Now, as mentioned earlier, Mortgage lenders will not allow a buyer to do an owner-occupied loan with a rent back exceeding 60 days because the lenders will treat it like an investment property, which again, will require a buyer to put a higher down payment and likely a higher interest rate. Number two, the security deposit. Usually a three to five rent back day period typically has no deposit or rent. Otherwise, a rent back scenario that exceeds 10 days but less than 30 days can often have a modest security deposit that's held in escrow from the time of closing until the seller vacates the property. And the security deposit is to protect the buyer from minor property damage occurred during the rent back period. Now, when the rent back period is over 30 days, the deposit is usually held by the new owner. And the deposit can vary anywhere from $500 up to one month's rent as a security deposit. I will say the longer the rent back, the higher the security deposit. And the deposit is returned to the seller tenant after vacating the premises and the buyer has verified the condition being substantially the same condition as when they purchased. 
Now, a side note, this can be a very good reason for having a home protection or home warranty plan that covers most of the items after escrow closes. And this can prevent a lot of headache and frustration for both buyer and seller in the event that something breaks during the rent back. So number three is the rental amount. Typically, when the seller remains in possession for three days or less, there is no rental amount again or deposit. The rental amount is frequently used for longer periods of time. Now, my pro buyer tip for buyers who want to increase their chances of getting their offer accepted in a sea of buyer offers is to offer the seller a free rent back period. It's a very inexpensive way to make it easier for the seller to relocate without the added pressure of time. I've had several buyers get their offer accepted over others just because they offered the seller a free rent back after the close of escrow. It really works. Otherwise, let's review a more typical rent back. Usually the amount of the rent can be set either at market rent or at least at an amount that covers the buyer's new payment. This would include principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and HOA fees if applicable. So in order to determine a per diem, you will take the total payment, divide by 30 days in a month to get a daily amount. So Let's assume the new buyer has a principal interest tax insurance payment of $6,000 a month, and the seller is planning on renting back for 25 days. So you'll simply take $6,000 divided by 30 days, which equals $200 a day. So a 25 day rent back would cost the seller $5,000 to remain in possession after the close. Number four, the payment. With rent backs that are less than 30 days, the rental amount is simply deducted from the seller side of the settlement sheet and credited to the buyer side of the settlement sheet. Otherwise, rent payments are paid directly to the new owner for rent backs that are longer than 30 days or more. Number five is utilities and maintenance. During this rent back period, utilities remain in the seller's name during this period of time. And the seller is responsible for maintaining the property, including things like pool, spa, landscape, and all property included in the sale, in substantially the same condition as upon the date of acceptance. Now the seller tenant is responsible for repairs caused by the tenant, excluding ordinary wear and tear. The seller tenant should wipe down counter surfaces and broom clean the property upon vacating the property. Number six, buyer entry. Now, the buyer is allowed access to the property while the seller is renting the property back. Sometimes there are agreed repairs that need to be done or buyer wants a contractor to provide an estimate to remodel the property once the seller vacates. Now, frequent visits by the buyer are not recommended since the seller is still working on moving as well. And typically a buyer will be given a set of keys at the close of escrow, but it still requires a buyer to give either oral or written notice for rent backs that are less than 30 days. And rent backs that are 30 days or more require actually written notice. Now, I hope this video was helpful. And if so, give us a like, thanks.